Good morning, guys. Good morning. It's cranking. We got two days left. I haven't even been hardly keeping track, and we got two days left. Two days left, Brody! Brody! You want to show them what you've been doing running, how you're running your combine? Well, I, you're going to show them. You have the camera in your hand. You really run her hard, don't you? Well, did you shut my cover yet? No. It's still open. It looks better. Oh, there we go. There's supposed to be three there. <laughs> it's supposed to be a and triple belt triple. with a back that's tied together. We're down to two and they're separated. It, it should be fine. Just cover it up. You'll never know. No one will ever know. I think there's vibrating because this latch comes unlatched. No, it's always been like that ever since it was new. Why won't it stay latched? I don't know. It always opens up. Don't ask. Trap got left open. It's like your file, too. That was nothing to do with me. Out in the field. No, it's cool, I got. I didn't. I never spilled. That's always you. <laughs> Ball out here. I don't know where it back to spell. I can see it. It looks exactly like this. I will not confirm or deny anything. <laughs> here it comes. You went way too far. Yeah, so I'm pretty excited about uh, two days of harvest, but we are so, 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 so far behind on tillage and fertilizer. Terribly behind just due to how wet of conditions it's been. We just kind of been kicking it down the road to deal with it later. So they are rolling today on tillage, but they got a lot to do. All right, it's been uh, a long time since I last talked to you. We've been greasing. They're actually, we're not too in a hurry today because we have to haul out about 20, 25,000 bushels. Then we might have enough room to fit the rest of the crop. So the trucks have been hauling to town, four of them hauling to town. Now we're gonna go combine, I guess. Morning, everyone. I'm finally back out doing some fertilizer. I got 26,000 pounds here. It's gonna be an old 7055 blend going on uh, some corn on corn ground of mine, actually. The field I'm in is what I call my south quarter, because my house is over there. This is gonna be black beans next year, so we won't be putting any P and K on it in the fall here. Uh, it's such a small little blend, I'll just do it all in the spring with a little bit of urea in there. So this one's ready for tillage. We did get a little bit of rain last night. I got the truck back on the approach, so it should be fine, but I don't think it's too much rain to stop tillage, but it should make it look really nice. This field, I have four acres, five acres of uh, corn down on the north end that was CRP last year. I broke it out of CRP. Yeah, that did about 80 bushels. Didn't really get the rain, so it's always next year. I have sprung a leak. Add it to the winter, fix it, lift. More well than something kind of nifty with these pro forces. This little solenoid block allows me to do headland control. So it slows down the right spinner just a little bit to even up that right side. Uh, so when you are ringing the headland, it's not throwing so much into the ditch. It's kind of cutting off and spread a little more consistent. So you're not wasting it and just giving it to the, uh, the grass in the ditch. So you don't have to touch nothing there. I control it all on the screen. You just push a button and it turns on that headland control. Pretty nifty. I like. 
like about my camera. It makes it easy for filling. So yeah, I've got uh, just over 26,000 pounds, uh, 244 pounds an acre. It ain't a full load. So I got plenty in the back, and I'll put the, the rest on the front here. Try to even the weight out. It's counting up. This ain't correct though. So let's change this. You can have presets in here, so 244 pounds an acre. I like to put in a half rate or so for any little point rows. Then I can just push that. It calculates based off of my scale how many acres I can do. If I was doing 150 pounds, obviously the acres go way up. 244. Set your density and whatnot in here, my cal number. This is what I'm always kind of chasing. But it's been working pretty good right now. Density of this is 64.8. Not much of a difference. We're ready. Well, happy, happy sunny, sunny Sunday. And we are hauling some uh, of Chet's sharecrop grain to town today and the elevator closes at 6 o'clock tonight, so me and KW. We've been called to action. So we're gonna take a take a few trips of grain to town if the dryers are gonna behave. Otherwise I'm gonna be only taking one trip to town. So if any of you do not know what those are, those are called crossfires. And all they are is they equalize the tire pressure from the inside dual to the outside. And then uh, if the black lines, that one's a little low, the black lines line up, then they have got 100 pounds in. Now I over pump this one, so the black lines if it's showing a little red, oh, well, too much red, or that means there's over 100 pounds. Not a big deal. Each tire has the equal amount in it, but uh, I I really like them. They do make them. They do make them for singles, super singles. But we have not put them on this truck, so I have to check these and. We do not use truck very often. There is uh, 90 pounds in there. I'm gonna put 95 in each one. And you can buy different poundage ones of the Crossfires if you so choose. I believe they're 95 all the way up to 120, if I remember correctly. So, as soon as I get this done, I'm gonna go check the dryers one more time. And then I'm gonna be off to the field to grab the first load with KW. I'm scared to even test out the air conditioner in here. I'm sure, well, you never know. It might work. And I don't want to suck in all the chaff that's blowing. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, don't look at that. Don't look at that. We're experimenting with a new, uh, a new coating for the yard. Yeah, it's called Kern. Kern covering. I don't have a good feeling that it's going to work out very well, but we're, we tried it out last night. Just a little experiment. Yeah, there was a trap left open. There, there was a situation. But no harm, no foul. Oh, man. It maybe don't matter, but I'm going to clean the, the corn out of the corners because that's our corn and not the share crop corn. So I'm going to go to the field with an empty truck. Although, maybe I should just open up the end gate. I bet there ain't more than, what, three bushel? Well, we'll see. Uh, we're gonna empty that out. That's more than three bushel, and I'm not feeling generous. I'm a, I'm a greedy, greedy human today. You know them greedy humans? Oh, you're looking at one. I don't know how he puts up with us. Oh, I better check the side draw. Tear that off. I can't see, but I bet that would have been the end of the side draw. I'm not gonna risk that. I'm gonna just back up and 
dump in the other pit. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. I knew I could do it. Okay, so what you just witnessed there is uh, maybe 20, 22% corn. And we're gonna just grab, grab the snow rake from 1978. They don't make them like that no more. We just kinda converted it over to the corner cleaner. So you can see how it's a little bit off. Yeah, it, it's caked up there a little bit. I should have cleaned that out last time. It'll blend. Okay, I got one mile away from the field and the east dryer called me, so I came right back home. And now I'm gonna take off, head towards field again and uh, try it one more time. I also had to help get the tillage drags back on to the implement. That thing, uh, that thing is starting to eat the back U-bolts like a uh, child eating candy. I don't know what's going on there, but I'm tempted to uh, maybe do a little fabbing. Two, I think the first two years we didn't touch that machine. And now the back U-bolts for some reason, not a big deal. It's very easy and simple to, to fix and put back on, but I'm thinking I might just drill them holes out and try to put the next size bigger U-bolt in because I don't like downtime. It's so inconvenient. I tried to make it from here to there. It's all I had. But I'm full. I'm severely full. Look at Brody and his big hopper. Look at him go. He's not even going to switch over. He knows he's got... He'll probably even combine my strip. So disappointing being the little guy. <laughs> That's like the only advantage of driving that combine. Otherwise this one's much much nicer machine. Should be the same. I hate that. Oh yeah, we are full! We're at full capacity. See my little camera there? That's the view that you guys were seeing from the cab. When that little camera goes under corn, it's it's definitely coming over right here or will be very, very short. shortly. That's a nice sample, I like that. I love combining. This stuff's like 16 and a half percent. I'll combine 16.5 over 28 percent any day. Oh, he shut her down. He can't get my strip. He's getting full. He could have done her. He could have done it. You can't do my strip. It has a full. You look pretty full, but I thought you'd try it. Do you think I could? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It looks like kind of crappy corn there. I think you probably could. Did you encourage him to cap corn for the first time this year? Oh, he's climbing up there to see. <laughs> he's getting a good look. <laughs> he's shoveling. He's shoveling. <laughs> Make some room. The grain cart was not filled up with fuel, so we are waiting for a short period here. Speak of the devil, there he comes! Come shooting out from up behind the grove up there. <laughs> Just when I was gonna try it. <laughs> as long as we have a few minutes here, I think I'll take my opportunity now to share with you something that Eric, yeah, the big sweep. He had never ever heard. And I'm just gonna see if anybody else out there was trained the way I was trained. How do you carry your gloves in your back pocket? Now I was told from a young a youngster to always put, here let me get my, glo my gloves out. See my gloves? I was trained to always put the hands, the hand of the glove 
that goes inside your pocket so that if you've got grease on your fingers or anything else that is inside of your pocket making sure that your pocket gets pre lubricated to the proper no it is to protect your pickup seat car seat tractor seat whatever seat my dad thought that it'd be better to protect the seats of the equipment more than the inside of his pocket. That was mom's problem, evidently, but I just wondered. Make a comment there. I'm sure Chet will love reading all the comments, and uh, don't blame me. It's the way I was trained. Palms in the pocket, kids. Now I gotta go tarp a truck. You guys gotta be careful out here. Could get run over. We have successfully, I say, successfully made it to town. No issues. KW is running like a top. Let's see, lane one. It said lane one, right? Yes, yes it did. Okay, stay tuned. We have successfully unloaded and are entering the outbound scale now and where we'll pick up our little ticket and uh, see what we had for moisture and head back to the field. And we're off. We got Chris running the 580 today. Jordan's gonna be running the other grain cart. So Eric can spread fertilizer and hopefully keep all the wheels on the bus going round and round. So he's cut over. We're trying to make it a cut through down the middle. So we gotta do this because obviously neither one of us is gonna make it a mile. He can make it, uh, oh, I don't know, a little, little over halfway. Corn yield's pretty good. Gonna be a lot of grain moved off this field today. Hopefully. And just like that, I'm the leader and Brody will be right there. And now I have nothing fun to watch besides corn go down. I kind of like being the guy following. I get to surveil. It's unlike the surveillance team, making sure nobody runs over anyone else or backs into anybody else. So then when I'm the leader, then I'm always nervous that I'm going to be the guy that backs into somebody. Oh boy, we're coming into a hot zone. Lots of, lots of inlets. And it's going to be either me or Brody that gets this one right there. And I'm the lucky winner. I am, and it's a good one, so I can't even mow it off. Dang it! Ah, uh, I always hope on a, I always hope on a strike through that it's just a crappy flag, and I can just, you know, mow it down. I never do that. But, you know, the hopes there. Uh, come on! I thought we were done with the mud. Who invited the mud to the party? Come on, Nidar! Come on, Nidar! <laughs> yeah. Oh boy! Back to the mud. <laughs> Chris, you're leaving ruts. So I don't know if you can see, but there's two different varieties out here, right where my finger's at, the line indicating here. Oh geez, Brody, you got a flag coming up right side. Looks like the top is about falling off, so up to you. If the pole is shot, we just mow them down because generally by the time the flag is missing, the bottom is so frayed out that it's not even worth keeping. So, anyways, this is Pioneer Corn. Standing really nice. It's a miracle. Joking, somewhat serious. <laughs> but what we're trying to do here is this Pioneer is uh, about 16.2 to 17%. So we're dumping that in the bottom of the wet bin and we are not going to be cleaning that out. We are going to try to end the season with 17, 16 to 17% corn in the wet bin, and then that will be what we haul out first and maybe try to blend it with some drier stuff or I don't, I don't really know what the plan is. It scares me, the thought of that scares me really bad just because I don't want a bend to go bad. But at 16.5, I don't think that's going to be an issue, but it'll definitely be the bend we'll be targeting to get out first. So we're gonna put this 16, 70% in the bottom of the bend since it's the morning, it's empty. 
and then we're going to put the wet stuff on top. We're going to dry out of the wet bin and dry the wet stuff, and once we get to the dry stuff, we're just going to quit and go into the other field once we've dried all the wet corn. Go into the other field that's 16%, top the bin off, and hopefully that ends our season. Hopefully, in our minds, that, that will work. We'll see if it works. So we're out on some uh, new ground to us, uh, landlord retired. He did kind of some minimal till, so it's quite smooth out here, actually. Also excited. You uh, get out into a field I've never been in. Bring it with the fertilizer tender, or fertilizer spreader here, and look for spots that might be trouble. And, I don't know, just get to learn new ground. So this is a quarter here, it's an 80 across the road, and then kind of a more cut up quarter than a 40 adjacent to this one that I'll be spreading on here. And then uh, we'll get the halo out here and get this looking nice and ready for next spring. I'm gonna try some corn out here next year. So. Learning. Well, Chris was out here with the halo uh, two nights ago, I think. No, I didn't get the fertilizer out of yet, but just wanted to get it work in case some weather came. And this looks amazing. You can plant into this. I'm excited to use that tool in the spring. It looks really good out here. The problem with them doing tillage before I spread P and K. If I don't have a good turn in with the tractor, everyone's going to be able to see that all winter until next spring tillage. And I am dealing with Case Auto Track, so it doesn't always grab the line very well. We'll get it. We'll get it. For those wondering if there's any issues with tillage before you do P and K, not really. P and K will ride the soil out. Nitrogen rides the water out of your field, so as long as you don't have massive amounts of erosion. You won't lose P and K if it sits on top. And if you do have massive amounts of erosion, besides losing your P and K, you're gonna have a lot of other work. So spreading fertilizer after tillage in our minds is not an issue. Well, I got kicked out of that field, not because they didn't want me there, but because I had to come or have to come do this little patch. So if you remember, we planted this literally, I believe in July, early July or very late June, very late June. Uh, we planted this 12 acres and it, it was grass green when we were here and 40% roughly, 38%. Now it's dry, we're towards the end of the harvest season and I've been sent in to see how muddy and bad this is gonna be. I really don't know how this is gonna end, so I'm taking you with. We'll see what we get into. Okay, I got my rear wheel assist on. It ain't gonna be bad here because I'm along the edge. What do we got here? Wow, 170, 180 for uh, yield, which is impressive for the planting date, but the moisture is uh, back into the 27%. Luckily, it's only like 12 acres here, so it is what it is. <laughs> but I am surprised that it, you can plant corn that late and it actually mature. It unloads like 28% corn, Look at how slow it comes out. Ugh. Yucky, yucky, and it's all ground up. Okay, well, I got the... There's the coyote. Oh, they got a coyote running. There's the driest part been harvested, the one pass along. Look at how slow it unloads. Oh, I don't miss that at all. Anyone want to come do this for me? With their machine? I'm very scared. Looking down all the rows as I was going past, I could just see glistening water the whole way through this this whole area here. Okay, I'm taking what I think will be the driest pass through here. So far, so good. Definitely spinning, but not. It's feeling more solid than I anticipated. Okay, right there is a little water. Oh, I got this. I think I got this on this pass anyways. <laughs> okay, we were sinking eight inches the whole way down, okay? Let's hope it don't get worse. Does anyone notice anything missing right there? I hooked a big old rut and folded two crop, crop divider shields right under the head. <laughs> That's so not good. Look at him. 
<laughs> oh gosh, why? Look at it all mounted up in there. This is just a disaster. That was, that's not good. That's bad. That's just sad. It's like a sad elephant trunk. We'll add that to the bill of this uh, experiment. Well, we adjusted them up as high as they would go and they're still too low, so I got the head riding really, really high to get this done with. And then hopefully I can get some new snouts tomorrow, maybe. That's just disappointing. Well, update, I got done here, heading home with literally not much left. Missing, that snout's totally destroyed. This one's equally is bad. Sounds like the wet bin's full because something got in the dryer metering rolls and it won't unload. Then something got in the other dryer's metering rolls. So something is self-destructing at the bend site and going into the dryers. And sounds like a truck's buried in the field for some reason by the bend site. What else did Dad say? Oh, the electric gates on top of the legs won't change from bends. Yeah, the wheels on the bus are flying apart. Everything, it is amazing how everything just, towards the end of the season, everything is just shot and wore out. It's sad that stuff can't last longer, but, well, this, this situation was mud and ruts. Like, this has nothing to do with wear and tear. This was just self-inflicted injury. But, something bad is happening at the Ben site, and Dad's been working on it all day. I don't know if he had a camera, but his uh, attitude is quite poor, and I best not even record him. So, with that being said, I'm signing off for the day, and uh, make sure to tune in next video and see what we find at the Ben site for destruction. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.